Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time again for another Verbling class. In this class uh, we're going to be doing some reading and I just want to let you know if you have a reservation already go ahead and click on the blue button, the Get Reservation button and you can come in right now uh, to the Google Hangouts and join me. Hi there. Aisha? Yeah, Hi there, how are you? Okay, so I, underneath when I uh, when I p uh, put my cursor over your picture, it says a shoe, but then over on the verbling check, it's Aisha. So, which is it? Aisha. Aisha. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. All right. So everybody, um, like I said, in this hour, we're going to be doing some reading. I got this article from yesmagazine.com. Yes is a magazine also, a paper magazine that comes out, I think, uh, I don't know, once a month or every couple months, something like that. And it usually, whoa, it usually has um, uh, nice articles about topics, uh, about the planet, uh, the economy, social life, people around the world, and Usually it uh, likes to have, have articles that are positive, that are trying to see, uh, talk about what people are doing that is helping uh, other people or helping animals or helping the planet or something like that. So I usually like to find some articles there so that we can read and see what kind of good things are happening in the world. Of course, we have enough bad things happening, so it's good to talk about some of the good uh, things that are happening for people and for the planet. So this one in particular is going to be about solar power. So I see that some people are opening it. Uh, the link, I will give the link again. The Verbling um, chat box goes, scrolls by pretty quickly when people start typing in it. Hi there, everybody, in the Verbling chat. Hi there. Hi. Zhao, Hi. how are you doing? Hi, teacher. I'm fine. And you? I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, Vincenzo, how are you doing? Vincenzo from Italy. Hi there. I think I uh, you're muted, so you can uh, unmute your microphone. And um, yeah, if you have a reservation, you can go ahead and get it now. It's uh, the blue button. And if you don't have a reservation, then I think the green button should be available just pretty soon here and you can click on the green join class button and as soon as we get everybody in here then what I like to do is just say hi say hi to everybody who shows up to class I want to make sure that your microphone is working because you will need it to read out loud um, and answer questions and things so let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we are full. So um, I'm going to say hi to everybody, and I want you to just say hi back and uh, make sure that your microphone is uh, working. If your microphone is not working, then uh, you won't be able to be in the class because part of the class is reading out loud. Okay, so all right, Adela, how are you? Fine, thanks. And you? I'm doing well. Uh, where's that picture? Um, this is a glacier. Mm -hmm. <coughs> where, where? In Patagonia. It? Oh, Patagonia. Okay, awesome. Nice. Was that uh, picture taken recently? Uh, three years ago. Oh, three years ago. Okay. Nice. Pretty. Okay. Aisha, how are you doing? Good. You're doing good? Ready yeah. to read? Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> All right, and Chalky, how are you? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's up, you? I'm doing well, thank you. Just wanted to check in Lots. everybody, make sure yeah. your microphone is on. Looks like it's good. And David, how are you? Very well, thank you. How about you? Good. All your uh, testing over? Yes, I'm over testing. Okay. <laughs> Great. And Hamid, you're still with us? Yes. Uh, the topic is uh, my interest topic. And uh, I also uh, worked in my master term 
uh, energy storage. Great. Okay, awesome. uh, and Can I ask another chemical joke? Sure. Go okay, ahead. I put the verb link chat. Okay, put it in the chat, yeah. Okay, and Zhao, you're with us. Hi there. Hi, teacher, again. <laughs> uh, yeah, just checking on the mics. Working fine, good. And Mohammed, how are you? Mohammed, is your microphone on? Yes. Okay, it's a little bit low, so you might uh, speak more into the microphone so I can hear you a little better. And, yeah, it's okay. Osama, how are you? I am fine, thank you. Okay, wonderful. And Vincenzo, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. I'm very pleased to, to meet you again. Okay. Uh, how are your things going? Great. I just got back from being in the desert, uh, in, the, in the desert, in the state of Utah. I was there oh, for you. a week. Okay. And it was, it was It was very interesting, I think. Yes, yeah, and I got uh, my t-shirt. I'll show you my t-shirt. Uh, it, it's probably backwards, maybe, but it says Utah <laughs> Rocks. Oh, uh, interrupts. Utah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> okay. Wow. I think I'm. I think I'm going to have uh, a cruise uh, in uh, Caribbean, oh. perhaps. Nice. Yeah, on a holiday, yes. Awesome. This holiday. Sweet. Mm. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Hamid, you have a little uh, joke or a riddle for us. Silver walks up to gold in a bar and says. Okay. I what put the answers. Hey, you get out of here. <laughs> Is that the chemical uh, designation? A -U? Yes. Uh, uh, A U uh, symbolize uh, gold. <laughs> gold. What? Gold. Yeah. I'm gonna. Excuse, tell excuse me, teacher. Perhaps, perhaps you can, can tell me when uh, there are hurricanes in uh, in. Uh, <laughs> in that place where I want to go, yeah. I think um, I think the hurricanes are in the fall, but I don't know. In in, in the which fall? month? In which month? Mm. Is it? Are they dangerous? <laughs> in the Caribbean? Uh, yeah. Caribbean. Yeah. Do you do you know which period is it? Are they? Um, let me see. Well, because I, I don't, I don't go in that period. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, you can. I don't know, but you can look it up. Uh, if you just look it up. Uh, Wait, I, hello. I can find it in the, in the internet. <laughs> yeah, just look it up. Okay. Okay, well, let's go on. Juan, how are you doing? I just wanted to check, make sure your microphone is working. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Okay. So. Okay. Does everybody have their? Uh, whoa, where am I here? Let me close that. Everybody have their document open so we can uh, begin reading. I think it's a yeah, kind yes. of. Yes. It's kind of I, long. I've got it. Great. It's going to take us a little while to get through it. And I think there's a lot of good vocabulary in here that we can uh, practice and uh, talk about. Make sure you guys understand it. The way that I do the reading class is I highlight. So this is what I'm doing right now, highlighting. I read. When I am reading, you listen. And you listen to okay. how I am pronouncing the words. And then I will have each student uh, take turns, and you will read the paragraph and then we'll just go down uh, the way like that. If you have any questions, uh, you don't understand a word, you want me to uh, repeat something so you can practice uh, pronouncing it yourself, then just let me know and I'll be happy to repeat again what I just said or explain one of the words if you don't know what it means. Okay, I think we lost somebody but we had Iyad come in. Iyad, are you there? Yes. Okay. Yad? 
Yes, okay, good. You're there. All right, so Hamid, he put up the um, the link again. And let's just make sure everybody has their Verbling window closed. All you need to open is your Google Hangouts window and the document window. And the Verbling window you can close because uh, if you leave it open, then we start hearing the recording uh, coming. So... And for everybody who is out there watching, uh, this is a good class for you because you can open up the document as well and you can read along with us. And if you want to ask a question in the verb link chat, then I will try to keep an eye on it. I will try to look at it and um, answer any questions you have. And also uh, other people can answer if they know the answer already. Okay. Here we go. The title of this article is Building a Solar Economy. Four lessons from Hawaii. Hawaii generates more of its power from the sun than any other state. Here's what the rest of us can learn from the obstacles that come up along the way and what's being done to overcome them. Okay. Adela, how about you read that? <laughs> Um, sorry uh, about the, this paragraph. Uh, yeah, you can read it a comment. Again. Yes. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, sorry. Uh, I have. Okay. Um, uh, mm, I don't know, but uh, uh, how um, is about. Uh, uh, the state uh, how it is the uh, the most uh, uh, productor of the uh, solar power um, yeah I think yeah um, but you don't have to talk the, about it right now yet did you want to comment because otherwise you can just read it ah, yeah, sorry just read, uh, just read what I just read so I'm gonna read first ah okay and you read okay, it okay. Yet. yeah I don't understand the uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> okay <laughs> okay now you got how it. I how I generate uh, more of, of its power from the sun than any other state here's what the rest of us uh, can learn from the obstacle that came up along uh, the way and what's been done to overcome mm -hmm. them okay so this word I just want to make sure you guys get the J. This is a what we generate. call a yeah Gen so generate. Generates. Yep. Good. And so that means it produces yeah. or it makes more power um, from the sun. Another word here, obstacles. Uh, that one comes up quite a bit in the readings that we do. So it's just something that gets in the way of make of allowing something to happen. So when you come in up against obstacles, it's, those are things that are difficult that might make it hard for you to achieve a goal or to do something you want to do. But this is what you do. You overcome them. So that means you... Uh, you take care of them. So maybe an obstacle for learning English is, for example, maybe not having people to speak with. That's an obstacle. And you overcome that by coming to Verbling or going, you know, getting a friend to talk with on Skype or something like that. So you overcome whatever obstacles you have. So there's a picture of Hawaii. Lots of sun in Hawaii. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. The solar era has begun. The industry is booming, prices are dropping, and solar energy at last seems poised to help topple the climate-altering dominance of fossil fuels. But bringing it to the masses won't be as simple as just soaking up the sun. Okay, David. Okay, sorry. Uh, the solar era has begun, the industry is booming, prices are dropping, and solar energy at last seems poised to help topple the climate altering uh, dominance of fossil fuels. But bringing into the masses won't be as simple as just soaking up the sun. Okay, great. 
So now I'm going to go over a few words in that uh, those two sentences. So the solar era, so a time period is an era. So this is the time that solar power is going to become more popular. The industry is booming. That means it's doing well. Prices are dropping. That means they're going down, being cheaper. Mm -hmm. And solar energy at last seems poised. When you are poised to do something, that means you're ready. You're in a good position to do it. And it's ready to topple. That means to make it fall down. So right now, as you know, a lot of countries, we uh, get our energy from burning things like uh, fossil fuels, like coal and uh, gasoline in our cars and things like that. And these types of uh, fossil fuels, they alter or change our climate. And they are dominating. So they're the most important ones of how we get energy right now. But now that's going to change, perhaps, because of the solar era. Okay? So. <coughs> but he says, bringing it to the masses. So the masses means the people, the, the, a lot of people around the world. Um, bringing it to the masses is not going to be so simple. That's basically what it means. Um, it's easy to soak up the sun. Soaking up the sun, that's an expression. Like if you go to the beach and you lay out on the beach and you're just laying there, you're soaking up the sun. You're just letting the sun hit your skin and you're getting warm. To gain a better picture of the challenges to come and of some possible solutions, electric companies and solar developers throughout the nation are watching Hawaii which derives a larger fraction of its electricity from the sun than any other state. Okay, of course we're talking about the United States. Okay, Hamid? To gain a better picture of the challenges to come and of uh, some possible solutions, electric companies and solar developers throw out the national watching Hawaii, which derives a larger fraction of its electricity from the sun than in other state. Mm -hmm. Good. So to gain, to gain means, so you could say to get a better picture, to gain a better picture. Um, they're talking about here the possible solutions of, uh, for that because there's some challenges. So whenever you have a challenge, thing that is, <coughs> makes it difficult for you and you have to find a solution. Uh, and it's coming from the electric companies and the solar developers, the people developing or making the solar panels, for example. And in the state of Hawaii, they're doing it uh, quite well because they're saying that Hawaii derives, and that just means uh, gets, so a larger fraction of its electricity from the sun. All right, homeowners and businesses have led the charge here. Something that distinguishes Hawaii from other states at the forefront of solar, like Nevada and Arizona, which depend more heavily on large-scale installations. Okay, Yad? Okay. Homes, homeowners and business have led the charge here. Something that distinguishes Hawaii from other states at the front forefront of solar, like Nevada and Arizona, which depend more heavily on large circles instead installation. Uh, all right, so uh, homeowners, so pe people who have homes and the businesses, and this is an expression in English to, they have led the charge. The expression is to lead the charge, and that means that you do it first. So whenever you're leading the charge, it means you're the first person doing something new. So in Hawaii, the homeowners and the businesses are doing this new thing, which is using solar panels. And um, they're out in the forefront, that means they're the uh, they're leading. And the reason why is because in other very sunny states like Nevada, 
in Arizona on the west coast of the United States. They have a lot of sun, but in Nevada and Arizona, they have large scale installations. So um, maybe out in the desert in Nevada and Arizona, they have uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of panels that are just out in the middle of the desert and they're creating energy with those solar panels. But what this is saying here is that in Hawaii, it's the homeowners and the businesses that are actually putting solar panels on the top of their roofs. So um, that's why it's creating all of this energy because they're putting them on top of their their um, houses. Okay, the reason the reasons. Okay, the reasons for Hawaii's solar boom are many. The Polynesians who inhabited the Hawaiian Islands before the arrival. Don't mute the teacher or else I will kick you out. Okay. The reasons for Hawaii's solar boom are many. The Polynesians who inhabited the Hawaiian Islands before the arrival of Europeans were entirely self-sufficient. But in 2010, it was a different picture. The state generated 86.1% of its electricity from imported petroleum. Okay. So that was a while ago. Juan. Yeah. The reason for Hawaii's solar boom are many. The <laughs> Polynesians who inhabited the Hawaii Islands before the arrival of Europeans were entirely self-sufficient. But in 2010, it was a different picture. The state generated 86.1% of its electricity from imported petroleum. Uh -huh. Good. So basically, they're just saying that um, the people who used to live on uh, the island, so in this word in English, we don't pronounce the S, A I, islands. Um, they were self sufficient. That means they were not having to import energy or get help from anywhere else. They were able to live there by themselves. And um, before that, uh, before now, let's say, it was a different picture, meaning it was very different. The state generated, so it means they got uh, their electricity from imported petroleum. So they had to uh, pay for petroleum and have it shipped to the islands. And that costs a lot of money, and that's very um, not self-sufficient, let's say. And so now that's why uh, solar has become so important. And yes, I wanted to answer... Um, Ayad in the chat, you're saying it's renewable. Yes, so um, solar power is renewable energy. Fossil fuel is not. Okay. The high price tag on that energy, along with a heightened awareness of the island's isolation, has led the state to set an ambitious goal to derive 40% of its power from renewable sources by 2030. It reached 13% in 2012 or 2012. You can say it either way. Okay. Zhao, do you want to go? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay, great. And the high price tank on the energy, along with uh, high net awareness of the island isolation, has led the stage to set an ambitious goal to derive, to derive a 40% of this power from renewable, re renewable, renewable sources by two, renewable two sources by 2013. 13. Mm -hmm. It's reaching 13. I can't see. The and can you move this page? Ah, yes. Okay. It's reaching 13 percent in 2012. Yes. Okay. Good. So let me go over a little bit of vocabulary here. Uh, so high price tag, that's just another way of saying that it was very expensive. So it used to be very expensive to import the petroleum. And so that, of course, encourages people or motivates people to try something different. <laughs> if something is too expensive, you want to try to make it cheaper. Um, and it also brought more awareness. So a heightened means more uh, awareness of the island's isolation. So as 
as you know, Hawaii has many islands and it's right out there in the Pacific Ocean, very isolated from other countries. Um, for example, if you take a plane from California or Washington to Hawaii, it takes about six hours on the plane. So that's quite a, quite a ways away. And they have an ambitious goal. So this word ambitious means something that is not easy to get, but it's something that's a big goal. So it's um, not a little goal, it's a big goal, something that's very important or maybe is going to be difficult to achieve. And the goal is that they want to have 40% of their power from renewable sources by 2030. So that's in uh, less than uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And they've already got 13% last year. So they're on their way to using uh, more and more renewable energy sources. So um, in the chat, the difference between renewal and renewable so basically, if something, it's an adjective, so if something is renewable, that means that you can renew it. The renewal is actually the noun, and that just means that um, it is something that you renew. So when uh, the renewal of, a, like if you have a, a magazine subscription, for example, and you pay money to have it renewed, that's your renewal. So for example, your renewal rate would be the amount of money you pay to renew your subscription to your magazine. So you can keep getting uh, the magazine. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions yet? There's a lot going on in the Verblink chat. I'm not sure if I'm able to look at it all. Yes, adjective and nouns different. That's the difference. Okay, we have a little graphic here. It's just showing that in 2012 Hawaii installed more PV, that stands for photovoltaic, that's the solar panels, and they did, they installed more in the last six years, I mean more in 2012 than the last six years combined, and you can see that this is called in English a bar graph, and so a bar graph is a pretty uh, nice graphic, easy way to show some um, information like this, so you can see how much yeah. more <clears throat> they did last year. Vincenzo, do you have excuse me, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yes, I I don't know what, what is tag. What's the meaning of tag? Okay, <clears throat> right here, tag. the high price tag. Tag, tag, uh, yes. Yeah. High price tag. What's uh, the word tag? I don't understand. The tag. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna show you. So look at me. So when you uh, go to the store and you're looking and something like for uh, maybe a shirt and you're looking for the price the price comes on a tag so it's a little piece of paper that's oh, usually okay. attached yeah that's the tag so that's where you find the price so your price tag okay, 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 okay. tells you the price uh, yeah. okay okay I understand thank you mm -hmm. so that's what they're trying to say that if something has a high price tag that means it's expensive that's another way to say it is expensive. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep reading here. Hawaii has roughly, oh, uh, sorry, I'm going to go back. Uh, somebody wanted me to say the word inhabited again. So the way you pronounce that is inhabited, inhabited, and that means uh, where people live. If um, Hawaii was inhabited by Polynesians, those were the native people who lived on the Hawaii Islands before the, the white people came. Okay, Hawaii has roughly doubled its solar power capacity every year <coughs> since 2007. <coughs> and in 2012, installed more solar than in the last six years combined. All right. It's not hard to see what's behind the solar frenzy. With the average electric bill stacking up to roughly $230 per month. Hawaii has the highest electricity rates in the nation by far, nearly twice as high as the second most expensive state. So that's a good reason to try to do something different. All right, who's going to read now? Juan? Yeah. Go ahead and read. Are you with me? Sorry? 
Yes, I'm asking Juan to read, so go ahead, Juan. Okay. Hawaii has roughly doubled his solar cap power capacity three oh, years since 2007. Oh. And in yeah, 2012, it's only more solar than in the last six years combined. It's not hard to see what's behind the solar frenzy with the average electricity bill. Yeah. Juan, did you get muted? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, staking yeah. or stacking? Stacking, stacking up. up rolly, yep. mm -hmm. Stacking up to roughly 230 per dollars per month. Hawaii has the highest electricity rates in the nation, by far nearly twice as high as the second most expensive state. Yes, so basically, um, What's happening is uh, this word frenzy, that just means when people are doing it. So there's a solar frenzy. It means a lot of people are putting up solar panels all at once. And the reason why is because your, uh, their electric bills are so expensive, $230 per month just for electricity. And that's a lot. It's the highest, actually, in the nation, in the country of the United States. And it's nearly, nearly means almost, so it's nearly, and uh, roughly means approximately, uh, nearly twice as high as the second most expensive state. So, of course, when something is very expensive, it motivates you to do something different so that you can uh, change that. Solar has the potential to decrease a homeowner's electric bill to zero except for a monthly $18 service charge. Those kinds of savings combined with federal and local tax credits mean a ho mean, I should say, means a Hawaiian homeowner can recoup the cost of a solar investment in just 3.1 years. Okay. Okay, Marcos, you joined us. Uh, do you want to read? Sure. Okay. Solar has the potential to decrease a homeowner's electric bill to zero, except for a monthly heating service charge. Those kind of savings combined with federal local tax credits means a Hawaiian homeowner can recoup the cost of a solar investment in just 3.1 years. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, they can... Basically, okay, Marcos, I'm going to mute you because there's a lot of background noise. Um, so basically it has the potential. So it means that it's possible. If something has the potential, it means that it's possible that this will happen. And it has uh, the possibility of making a homeowner's electric bill go down, decrease, to zero even. That's quite a bit, $30, except for a monthly service charge of $18, so that's just a small amount of money. So that's a lot of savings. You're saving a lot of money, plus you get some tax credits. That means on your taxes you maybe get to uh, take off some money. And then here's another word here you might want to know, recoup. So of course um, when you invest in the solar panels, maybe it will cost you a couple of thousand dollars and it will pay for itself. So recoup means so you will save so much money over 3.1 years that that will pay for your cost of uh, paying, buying the solar panels. So that's pretty good. It used to be um, a lot longer, maybe 10 or 20 years because solar panels used to be much more expensive but now they're becoming uh, cheaper. Even if all the tax credits were removed, it would still take only 8.9 years for a Hawaii solar installation to pay for itself. But so much solar has also created problems. Each island's electrical grid is isolated from the others and therefore less stable than a typical mainland grid particularly when unpredictable solar energy enters the picture. But solutions are beginning to emerge. Okay, 
let's see here, Osama. Yes. You can read that. But so much solar has also created problems. Each island's electrical grid is isolated from the others and therefore less stable than a typical mainland grid, particularly when a predictable solar energy enters the picture but solu mm -hmm. solutions but solutions are beginning to emerge yes okay so in the beginning the author is talking about how wonderful solar power is but it also um, has some problems or it has created so here's the has created problems um, for example, one of the problems is the fact that every island, so each island, has its own grid. The grid is uh, where the electricity goes into and then goes out to all the houses. Um, so they're isolated. Um, and it's therefore less stable. That means it's less, uh, it's kind of more erratic. Something else can happen to it than a typical mainland. The mainland means the United States. Uh, the, the 48 states that are all connected to each other, so not Alaska and not Hawaii. But the mainland refers to all the other uh, part of the country. And particularly when unpredictable, so something that you don't know ahead of time, you can't tell, like sometimes weather can be unpredictable. Um, if that Sometimes they don't know how much energy they're going to get because they don't know how much sun they're going to get. So those are some of the problems. But solutions, so things to fix these problems are starting to, beginning to emerge. They're starting to come to light. Emerge means they're finding out the, um, the solutions. They're coming to light is another way to appear. Yes, emerge means to appear um, or to come out or to come to light, for example. They're finding them out. They're figuring out the solutions. Better energy storage systems and and weather prediction technology are being developed to stabilize those grids. Meanwhile, the Hawaii legislature is poised to reduce solar tax credits, which some say are too expensive. In short, Hawaii is solving problems today that other states may encounter tomorrow. Okay, Vincenzo. Uh, from better energy, okay. Mm-hmm. In, yes. um, uh, better energy storage systems and weather prediction technology are being developed to stabilize those grids. Meanwhile, the way legislature legislature is supposed to reduce solar tax credits, which some say are too expensive. In short, a way of solving problems today that other states may uh, states may mm -hmm. yes, In, yes encounter. And may, may, may encounter tomorrow exactly okay great so excuse, excuse me TDJ, can, can I say something uh, so these islands are, are not interconnected about right. the, the, uh, the solar energy so each each, yes. each one has an arrow is all its own energy, but they are not all interconnected. Exactly. Yes. So okay. if you if you look here um, on the my screen, if you and you click on my screen, I pulled up a little map. It's kind of small, but it shows these are the Hawaiian islands. They're out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and I don't know if this okay. one's better. Okay. And so yeah, so you have every island has its own grid. So that means that grid, they are yes. not connected. Yes. Okay, so that means. What, what do you mean? With, with, what, what, what do you mean with, with grid? Grid, grid. grid. What okay. is it? Grid? Energy system works. Grid. What is a grid? Okay, I'll show you. So here's a picture of the United States. Do you see that? In my in my screen, that's a picture of the United oh. States. If you click on Not my tomorrow. on my uh, little box there, then my screen will show. And um, it, the grid is all of the, the net, it's like a network of the electricity. 
So uh, it's a scheme. It's a scheme. Yes. Scheme. Yeah. Scheme. Scheme. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Understand. They understand. Okay. Yeah. And that's how it's how it works. So, for example, if I if I have solar panels on my um, roof, and I have I'm connected yes. to the grid, so when my solar panels are producing energy because the sun is yes. out, for example, then my energy goes into the grid. And then that provides energy for all the customers who need electricity. All the customers, yes. Yeah. That so uh, your, your energy can be used for other customers. Exactly, okay. yes. And that's why um, they're saying that uh, your electric bill can go to zero. And I have also okay. heard that some people can actually make money. So, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's so, not just electric companies. Mm -hmm. So, so you can also get money from your energy when you don't you don't use it. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's right. Okay. Great. So let's let me see. So we, they need uh, storage systems. So there's sometimes you can store electricity or energy um, in batteries. Batteries, for example, if you have batteries, so they need better storage systems. So if the sun isn't shining, they can still have energy available that they put away for later. They stored that will help stabilize it, make it more predictable. And also, um, they're saying that one of the problems, though, is that the Hawaiian legislature, so that that is the people who make the laws, the government in Hawaii they might reduce these tax credits because they're kind of expensive. So a tax credit is, for example, if you owe, uh, let's say you owe a then you own tax credit helps you lower your tax, tax uh, bill. And so basically what she's okay. saying, in short, so that means like basically um, Hawaii is solving, that means they're taking care of these problems today that other states in the United States may encounter tomorrow. So when other states start using more solar panels, they also are going to have to deal with these issues. And so they're, um, they could, other states are probably going to learn from Hawaii, for example. Hawaii's high rate of solar adoption makes it a likely picture of California's future, according to Elaine Sison Labria, Renewable Energy Program Manager at the Sacramento Municipal Utility District. <laughs> That's a long word. The district is collaborating with the Hawaiian Electric Company to develop solutions to many of the obstacles it's encountered. All right, so that's there's a lot of words in there. All right, who's next? Adela, are you still with us? Yeah, Adela, okay. Yes, Hawaii's high rate of solar adoption makes is a likely picture of California's future, according to Elaine Sison Lebrilla, Renegol, the energy program manager at the Sacramento Municipal Utility District. The district is collaborating with the Hawaiian Electric Company to develop solutions to many of the obstacles it's encountered. Mm -hmm. Right. So the rate, right here, where it says the rate of solar adoption, so that just means fast people are putting up solar panels. How, that means adoption. When you adopt a new strategy or a new technique, that means you start doing it. So they're adopting or starting uh, to use solar panels uh, very quickly and um, basically the district uh, is collaborating that means they're working when you collaborate with somebody you work together with them they're working together with the Hawaiian Electric Company to develop or to create to find solutions to these obstacles remember obstacles are the problem that they are encountering or to encounter means to run into or to find um, so yeah they're working on that they'll see these problems much sooner than us Sison Labria said and the hope is that there will be lessons learned from them and will be prepared alright I'm gonna keep reading here obstacle one more power than the grid can handle what about cloudy days that's the perennial question for an industry striving to improve the efficiency of solar technology. 
but it's too much power, not too little. That's the problem in Hawaii. <laughs> so that's the first problem. All right, let's see. David, go ahead and read all that. And they'll see this problem such a match sooner than us. A season, they will say it. And the hope is that there will be lesson learned from them and will be prepared. Osteco one, more power than the green can handle. What about cloudy days? That's a perennial question for an industry striving to improve the efficiency of solar technology. But it's too much power, not too little. That's the problem in Hawaii. Yeah. So they have their first obstacle or their first problem is basically that uh, there's too much power being generated. Perennial means that's the like, question that gets asked all the time. Um, and striving to improve. When you strive to do something, it means trying. You're working on something. So they're <clears throat> striving to improve the efficiency. That means how well it works. If it's something is very efficient, then it works very well. And so they're trying to improve the efficiency of the solar technology. But they, the problem is actually not too little, it's too much. It's because Hawaii has so much sun that the solar panels are creating a lot of energy. All right, the system... So Hawaii is a, is a sunny place. Eh? Yes. Hawaii is a sunny place. Very sunny, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, the system was not designed originally to have energy flowing two ways, explained Peter Rossig, spokesman for the Hawaiian Electric Company, or HECO, which provides electricity to 95% of the Hawaiian population. Now, all of a sudden, you have rooftop solar, and most of them are sending power back over these lines during much of the day because they're producing more than they can use. All right, so I'm going to have you guys read this, both of those right there. So hold on. So we have, so we have okay. to change place in order to have electricity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Errol. Hey, yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi. Um, okay, I read. Yes. <laughs> the system was not designed originally to have energy flowing two ways, explained Peter Rasek, spokesman for the Hawaiian Electric Company or HECO, provides electricity to 95% of the Hawaiian population. Now, all of a sudden, you have food trap, solar, and most of them are sending power back to over these lines during much of the day because they are producing more than they can use. Right. So basically uh, the system was not designed originally. Originally means they didn't um, design the system that they could have it going back and forth between the houses and the grid. So what's happening now is for example uh, you have all of these solar panels on the rooftops of the houses or the businesses and the solar panels create energy that the house is using but it's actually creating even more so it's sending it to the grid so that's something that they didn't uh, realize was going to happen traditionally a human operator at a centralized system operations center tracks power generation to ensure that it stays exactly equal to demand. But solar power generated by individual homes or businesses is invisible to these operators. This increases the risk of a sudden spike or drop-off in power which can damage generation or transmission equipment, even home appliances, and cause outages and instability across the grid. Okay. All right, go ahead, Hamid. Traditionally, a human operator at a centralized system operations. Yeah, center. Uh, operations center tracks power generation to ensure that it stays exact, exactly equal to demand. But yeah. solar power generated by individual homes or businesses is uh, invisible to these operators. This increases the risk 
of a sudden spike or drop off in power which can damage generation or transmission equipment, even home appliances, and cause outages and instability across the grid. Yeah. So usually there's a guy watching to make sure that uh, however much people need and how much is available is equal. All right? The generation, how much is created, and how much is being used the demand. But what's happening with all this solar power is sometimes it can have a spike. That means it goes up really high or it can drop okay. off. Yeah, okay. and that's dangerous because that can kind of blow out stuff <laughs> or it can cause outages it goes out. So, okay. so you, you can't have a, a stable line of electricity, a percentage yeah. of electricity. It can, right. it can be high or can be yes. lower. Yeah, because okay. usually because usually there's a person watching that, but that person can't watch it if it's coming from the individual houses, the different different houses. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop reading and just have you guys read because we have a lot of uh, ways to go. So, Zhao, go ahead and read solution grid upgrades. This upgrade, I can say, let yeah. me, I was... Can you p move in your page, please? Well, I want you to read right there. Solution, grid, upgrades, meters, and batteries. Solution, solution, batteries. I can't see that. Sorry. You can't see it? Um, OK, I can see now. Yeah. Yes, I can <laughs> <Okay>. now. Solution, <laughs> OK. Solution, grid, upgrades, meters, and batteries. Mm -hmm. you, you need, you need, you need ultimately. mentally. Ultimately. You need me Intermittently, infrastructure upgrades, probably massive ones, will be essential. E uh, ICO and civil solar indu industry and advocacy groups have developed a plan for rolling out these upgrades, which they present to Huawei public unit unit utility utilities mm -hmm. utilities. Yes. I can't see anything more. You need utilities, and then commission mm. for review in I January. I can't see that. I can't see. Huh? I don't know why. <laughs> I can see it on mine. <laughs> oh my God! I don't know why. So, a uh, commission for review in January. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see. I, it sometimes it uh, takes a little while to get clear. I think when I move it, so that's why probably. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay, that's so basically, ultimately, that's how you say that word, ultimately, so that means in the end, uh, they're going to have to upgrade, which means make better. When you upgrade something, it means you make it better. They're going to have to upgrade the infrastructure, which is like all of the stuff that you need, the lines, the batteries, the meters, all those different uh, uh, equipment that you need. And uh, so that's basically what that is. They just have to work with upgrading, making the system better. All right, so okay. let's see, who's next? Uh, do, 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 Juan? Yeah. They, they recommend? recommend? What they call a proactive approach. And advise utilities to prioritize, prioritize right upgrades. In areas where they anticipate seeing the most demand for solar. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, keep going. The technologies that will be used to the redef re redefine the grid mm -hmm. are under development. Among these are smart grid, the way solar power generation distributed to system operators. The, I can see them. the Maui smart grid project will be collecting data from the smart meters testing throughout. 2013. 13. Yeah. So they're going to just install these uh, meters so that people can see how much power is actually being generated. And this will help them control how much power um, is going into the grid and how much is being used. Okay, next uh, paragraph here. Uh, Marcos? Short-term battery storage systems are further along, with experiments using 1 megawatt batteries now underway on three islands. 
such batteries could store excess power to smooth out power spikes and loops. Yeah. What is these loops? Yeah. So what they're saying is they're going to have batteries that store the power so that it'll make it more even. So if we have a spike, it'll be able to, all that extra energy will go into the batteries. And if there's and a lulls, lull, lull when, um, lull. What is uh, it? less power, it's when there's less, less power. power. Yeah. So then, okay. yeah, so if there's less power, there's a lull, then the, the power will come from the batteries where it was being stored. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So let's keep moving along here. Okay, Osama. Osama, I can't hear you. Yes. Go ahead. I hear you. Yeah. Okay, these batteries are expensive, but if they are proven to work, Rosage says it is reasonable to expect demand to go up and prices to go down and lower prices for a proven technology could pave the way for other grids around the country. Exactly. Okay, so even though the batteries cost a lot of money, they're very expensive, this could be one way that it will help even out so that uh, the prices can uh, go down even more. Hawaii, all right, Vincenzo, why don't you read that? Hawaii is an ideal place. I'm looking for uh, wait a moment. Uh, Away is an ideal, uh, ideal place to test these technologies. Technologies are on the mainland where power companies can draw electricity from surrounding areas. If they run into problems, each island Island has its own grid that is connected. Where is it? Yeah, connected to the others. Yeah. So ideal means like a good place and to test this stuff. Unlike, so basically, it's easy to do it on the mainland because everything interconnected. So it's harder to figure out what to do um, there. I'm going to read this part here. That's why Hawaii is in such a precarious. That means like a kind of a interesting situation in the first place, kind of a dangerous position because they're so isolated, each island. But it also uh -huh. makes the success or failure of any technology that's being tested immediately visible. So while it's kind of a problem that they're so isolated, it also is a good thing because now you'll know, like, does this work? Yes. Does it work? No. So you'll know right away if it's going to work or not. Um, I'm going to keep reading here. Obstacle to the unpredictable politics of solar tax credits. Hawaii is doling out. That means giving out more. Doling out. When you dole out, it means you give out money. They're doling out more solar tax credit dollars than ever. And now state legislators are seeking, so they're looking for, uh, to reduce yes. that spending. They want to stop spending so much money on that. But some argue that the expenses have been overestimated while the benefits have been overlooked. So some people are it's expensive, but it's, it's really good still. It's a benefit. It's a good thing. In September 2012, the state's Department of Business, Economic uh, Development, and Tourism projected that Hawaii would spend <coughs> more than $173 million on tax credits for solar by year's end, five times as much as in 2010. Um, but one solar industry leader, Mark Duda, contends that those projections were overestimated, so they were too large, by more than $56 million, according to actual year-end figures. Actual means like numbers. Uh, Duda is principal and founder of Oahu's top solar company, Revolution, and president of the Hawaii PV Coalition. It's a staggering difference. That means it's a huge difference and an important one, considering how closely the state legislature is watching these numbers. In the next month, the legislature is expected to vote on a measure that could gradually decrease the state's 35% capped tax credit. 
which solar adopters receive in addition to a 30% federal tax credit. How the tax credit should be handled is just one piece in a puzzle of controversies. Controversies are where people don't agree on things. Also on the table, that means also um, when something is on the table, it means what they are looking for, what they're, what they're dealing with. Also on the table is a Department of Taxation Administrative Rule, effective January 1st, which aimed to cut down on the widespread practice of claiming multiple tax credits for a single project. All right, nonprofit law organization Earth Justice is now representing the Sierra Club in a lawsuit over the pointing to the past releases from the department that defend the practice it's now trying to eradicate. Eradicate means to get rid of. Such policy changes create uncertainty that the solar industry hard, said Isaac Morawake, an earth justice attorney. That's the exact wrong message you want to send the market. We support renewable energy. No, just kidding. So basically this whole part is just saying that they're trying to decide how much money people can uh, save if they invest in um, uh, the tax credits or in the solar panels. Breno, the opposite of overestimated is underestimate. Yes, thank you, Marcos. Underestimate. So the solution, obviously, is a more stable tax policy. So they just need to get themselves together and figure out what type of credit Okay, I'm not going to read that. The other one is because we're running out of time. Uh, the other obstacle, let's see, aside from the environmental benefits of clean energy, increased economic independence means that Hawaii's energy prices won't spike when oil prices do, which is what happened after the Japanese tsunami in 2011. All right, let me go to the, what was the last one? Do, 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 do. Okay, the obstacle three is the 15% rule. Power companies have long been concerned about too much solar energy overloading the grid. Too much can pose a danger by suddenly powering lines, which during a power outage, utility employees don't expect to be electrified. So that's a danger. So for several years, Hawaii adhered to, that means they uh, kept to the 15% rule, which prohibits the owners of solar installations from producing more than 15% of the maximum energy demand in a given day. All right, so I tried to finish, but there's a little bit more. The solution to that is to lift excessively cautious limits. So basically let people produce more energy. And then there's a final obstacle is the unpredictability of the sun's power. And the solution is better solar prediction. So if you are interested in this topic, then of course you can keep reading. Uh, the article is pretty long. Yeah, but there's lots of really good vocabulary in there if you are interested in this uh, scientific topic and renewable power and solar energy and all of that. Um, I'm going to show you guys real quick. I have my neighbor just got some solar panels. So I'm going to show you what that looks like if I can out the window here. Maybe you guys can see. Uh, let's see. Maybe. You see those solar panels? Those are yes, solar I can panels. see. Yeah. So more people, even in Washington, which is not a very sunny state, are getting uh, solar panels on their roofs because they can create energy not just for themselves, but also for the power grid. So more and more people are uh, getting interested in doing that. So I'm sorry that we ran out of time because we could have uh, talked about it a little bit more because it would be interesting to hear about uh, your countries and whether or not solar power is something that is getting uh, to be popular or not. I know that, for example, in Turkey, you probably get a lot of uh, sun, Hamid. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. yes, and in many, many countries get quite a bit of sun, so. Yes. yes. Um, I, yeah, yes, I have solar panels, but they're not for electricity. They're solar panels for hot water, because that was something that a lot of uh, many years ago, that was the first thing that people used solar panels for was to um, just for the hot water in their house. But now it's actually tied to the grid, so it's a little different. Germany is very well-known uh, country for uh, solar energy. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Germany. We read another article uh, last week or something, two weeks ago, about Germany. They, they also uh, produce a lot of energy, even though it's not so sunny there all the time. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for coming to class. I'm sorry we didn't have time to read it. It's pr it was pretty long, I guess. Um, but if you're interested, you can always read more of it. And if you have any questions, you can uh, post on my Facebook page and let me know. Okay. See okay. you, Lisa. Bye bye. Thank bye, you. guys. Marcos, bye. Adela. Bye bye. Bye. Vincenzo from Italy. Hi there. I think I uh, you're muted, so you can uh, unmute your microphone. And um, yeah, if you have a reservation, you can go ahead and get it now. It's uh, the blue button. And if you don't have a reservation, then I think the green button should be available just pretty soon here. And you can click on the green join class button. And as soon as we get everybody in here, then what I like to do is just say hi. Say hi to everybody who shows up to class. I want to make sure that your microphone is working because you will need it to read out loud um, and answer questions and things. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we are full. So um, I'm going to say hi to everybody and I want you to just say hi back and uh, make sure that your microphone is uh, working. If your microphone is not working, then uh, you won't be able to be in the class because part of the class is reading out loud. Okay, so, all right, Adela, how are you? Fine, thanks. And you? I'm doing well. Uh, where's that picture? Um, this is a glacier. Mm -hmm. <coughs> where, where? In Patagonia. Oh, Patagonia. Okay, awesome. Nice. Was that uh, picture taken recently? Uh, three years ago. Oh, three years ago. Okay. Nice. Pretty. Okay. Aisha, how are you doing? Good. You're doing good? Ready yeah. to read? Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> All right. And Chalky, how are you? Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's up, dear? I'm doing well, thank you. Just wanted to check in. Lots. Everybody, make sure your yeah. phone is on. Looks like it's good. And David, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good. All your uh, testing over? Yes, I'm over testing. Okay. <laughs> Great. And Hamid, you're still with us? Yes. Uh, Tell me when uh, there are hurricanes in the... Uh, in, uh, <laughs> in that place where I want to go. Yeah. I think um, I think the hurricanes are in the fall, but I don't know. In in, in the which fall? month? In which month? Mm. Is it? Are they dangerous? <laughs> in the Caribbean? Uh, yeah. Caribbean. Yeah. Do you do you know which period is it? Are they? Um, let me see. Well, because I, I don't, I don't go in that period. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, you can. I don't know, but you can look it up. Uh, if you just look it up. Uh, Wait, I, hello. I can find it in the, in the internet. <laughs> yeah, just look it up. Okay. Okay, well, let's go on. Juan, how are you doing? I just wanted to check, make sure your microphone is working. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Okay. So. Okay. Does everybody have their? Uh, whoa, where am I here? Let me close that. Everybody have their document open so we can uh, begin reading. I think it's a yeah, kind yes. of. Yes. It's kind of long. I've got it. Great. It's going to take us a little while to get through it. And I think there's a lot of good vocabulary in here that we can uh, practice and uh, talk about. Make sure you guys understand it. The way that I do the reading class is I highlight. So this is what I'm doing right now, highlighting. I read. When I am reading, you listen. And you listen to okay. how I am pronouncing the words. 
and then I will have each student uh, take turns and you will read the paragraph and then we'll just go down uh, the way like that. If you have any questions, uh, you don't understand a word, you want me to uh, repeat something so you can practice uh, pronouncing it yourself, then just let me know and I'll be happy to repeat again what I just said or explain one of the words if you don't know what it means. Okay, I think we lost somebody, but we <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Lisa and it's time again for another Verbling class. In this class, uh, we're going to be doing some reading and I just want to let you know if you have a reservation already, go ahead and click on the blue button, the Get Reservation button, and you can come in right now uh, to the Google Hangouts and join me. Hi there. Aisha? Yeah, hello. Hi there, how are you? Okay, so on, underneath when I, uh, when I uh, put my cursor over your picture, it says a shoe, but then over on the verbling check, it's Aisha. So, which is it? Aisha. Aisha. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. All right. So, everybody, um, like I said, in this hour, we're going to be doing some reading. I got this article from yesmagazine.com. Yes is a magazine, also a paper magazine that comes out, I think, uh, I don't know, once a month or every couple months, something like that. And it usually, whoa, it usually has um, uh, nice articles about topics uh, about the planet, uh, the economy, social life, people around the world, and usually it uh, likes to have, have articles that are positive, that are trying to see, uh, talk about what people are doing that is helping uh, other people or helping animals or helping the planet or something like that. So I usually like to find some articles there so that we can read and see what kind of good things are happening in the world. Of course, we have enough bad things happening, so it's good to talk about some of the good uh, things that are happening for people and for the planet. So this one in particular is going to be about solar power. So I see that some people are opening it. Uh, the link, I will give the link again. The Verbling um, chat box goes scrolls by pretty quickly when people start typing in it. Hi there everybody in the Verbling chat. Hi there. Hi. Zhao, Hi. how are you doing? Hi teacher, I'm fine. And you? I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, Vincenzo, how are you doing? Had Iyad come in. Iyad, are you there? Yes. Okay. Iyad? Yes, Nash. yes. Okay, good. Here we go. Alright, so Hamid, he put up the um, the link again and let's just make sure everybody has their verbling window closed all you need open is your Google Hangouts window and the document window and the verbling window you can close because uh, if you leave it open then we start hearing the recording uh, coming so and for everybody who is out there watching uh, this is a good class for you because you can open up the document as well and you can read along with us and if you want to ask a question in the verb link chat then I will try to keep an eye on it. I will try to look at it and um, answer any questions you have and also uh, other people can answer if they know the answer already. Okay, here we go. The title of this article is Building a Solar Economy. Four lessons from Hawaii. Hawaii generates more of its power from the sun than any other state. Here's what the rest of us can learn from the obstacles that come up along the way and what's being done to overcome them. Okay. Adela, how about you read that? Um, sorry uh, about the, this paragraph. Uh, yeah, read it the comment. Again. Yes. Okay. <coughs> mm, uh, sorry. Uh, I have. Okay. Um, uh, mm, I don't know, but uh, 
uh, how um, is about uh, uh, the state uh, how it is the the most uh, uh, productor of the uh, solar power um, yeah I think yeah um, but you don't have to talk about it right now yet did you want to comment because otherwise you can just read it Ah, yeah, just sorry. Read, just read what I. The topic is uh, my interest topic, and uh, I also uh, worked in my master term uh, energy storage. Great. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and can I ask another chemical joke? Sure. Go okay, ahead. I put the verbling chat. Okay, put it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, and Zhao, you're with us. Hi there. Hi, teacher again. <laughs> uh, yeah, just checking on the mics. Working fine. Good. And Mohammed, how are you? Mohammed, is your microphone on? Yes. Okay, it's a little bit low, so you might uh, speak more into the microphone so I can hear you a little better. And. Yeah, it's okay. Osama, how are you? I am fine, thank you. Okay, wonderful. And Vincenzo, how are you today? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. I'm very pleased to, to meet you again. Okay. Uh, how, how are your things going? Great. I just got back from being in the desert, uh, in, the, in the desert, in the state of Utah. I was there oh, for you. a week. Okay. And it See, was fun. It was very interesting, I think. Yes, yeah, and I got uh, my T-shirt. I'll show you my T-shirt. Uh, it, it's probably backwards, maybe, but it says Utah <laughs> Rocks. Okay. Uh, Utah Rocks. Utah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> okay. Wow. I think I'm. I think I'm going to have uh, a cruise uh, in uh, Caribbean, oh. perhaps. Nice. Yeah, on a holiday, yes. Awesome. This holidays. Sweet. That would be great. Okay, Hamid, you have a little uh, joke or a riddle for us. Silver walks up to gold in a bar and says, Okay. I what put the answers. Hey, you get out of here. <laughs> Is that the chemical uh, designation? A -U? Yes. Uh, uh, A-U uh, symbolize uh, gold. <laughs> gold. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna excuse, excuse me, teacher. Perhaps, perhaps you can, can 